Although you can access the Dab Stencil properties from the Properties bar, I'll open the Dab Stencil panel, since we'll be using that a lot in this lesson. I'll also show the Flow Maps panel. Many types of brushes can utilize Dab Stencil. I'll choose a brush that is in my Palette Knives category, called Smooth Dab Knife, and reset it. I'll select the Fish Skin Flow Map, set the scale to 100%, and paint some lighter colored scales onto the fish. You can add Dab Stencil to any dab-based brush, such as Circular, Captured, or Dynamic Speckle. Dab Stencil works well with brushes that add paint, blenders, watercolor, thick paint, and more. I can even create a Dab Stencil Eraser. In my Hard Media category, I'll select Dab Chalk Eraser. This is a captured brush that uses the eraser method. I'll change the Dab Stencil, which is set to paper, to simulated wood grain, and I can erase some of the scale pattern. As you can see, I can combine several Dab Stencils together. I'll erase on the canvas layer so you can better see the effect of Dab Stencil on the eraser. In addition to using a paper and a flow map as a dab stencil source, you can also select a texture. I'll return to the smooth dab knife, set the paper back to basic paper, select a texture dab stencil, and set the texture to high tech. There is an option to show the texture, which indicates where the texture would apply. Or in other words, the texture you see is what will transfer to the canvas. Although this texture covers the entire canvas, in many cases, it may not. You may need to scale the texture larger from the Transform Textures panel, which is why there is a shortcut for the Texture panel on the Dab Stencil panel. I'll turn off Show Texture and Paint on the Fish. You can see that now the light and dark areas from the texture are what creates the positive and negative space in my strokes. Moving on down in the Dab Stencil panel, we can control the strength of the Dab Stencil effect on the dab. I'll continue using the smooth dab knife. I'll remove random grain rotation and random grain position, and I'll set the paper to basic paper. When I paint a test stroke with light pressure, you can see a lot of the fish skin dab stencil in the stroke because the strength is set to 100%. I'm getting the maximum effect of the dab stencil, but I could lower that to 85%, and now the gaps in the stroke are partially filled with paint. The dab stencil opacity has been reduced, so rather than the gaps being fully transparent, they are now semi-opaque. If I reduce the strength all the way to zero, that's the same as having no dab stencil applied at all. You can control the strength using expressions. Typically, you would use pen pressure. I've also inverted the expression so that when I press lightly, I get more dab stencil rather than less. This feels more natural to me. I'll adjust the strength to 100% and the minimum strength to 75%. This creates a brush that gives me faint detailed scales with a lot of dab stencil when I use light pressure. When I use heavy pressure, I get opaque scales that are closer together because less of the dab stencil is showing through. We can also randomize the strength of the dab stencil with the jitter properties. I'll select the sergeant knife brush from my palette knives AR category. I'll paint a large horizontal reference stroke. Then I'll add 100% strength jitter and paint another stroke beside it. You can see that the strength of the dab stencil effect varies between the minimum and maximum strength values for each dab in the stroke. You can use the smoothness slider to make the changes in strength occur more slowly over the length of the stroke. Jitter can be useful for breaking up the dab stencil pattern to help it look more natural. Let's wrap up this topic by looking at how to use dab stencils with a blender. I'll choose my coarse oily blender brush. This brush has a dab stencil applied, so if I paint on the canvas layer, you can see I'm getting that texture from the fish skin flow map. I'm also able to build up the grain because I have random grain rotation enabled. This combination gives me a lot of detail and texture when I blend, 